Hey everybody, I wanted to give a quick update. I actually just drove back into my driveway from a, a day at the state capitol. We basically were forced to come back in, uh, deal with the crisis. Uh, we were able to get it done, hopefully in, in one day. Hopefully we're, we're done for a little while now uh, and we're able to get back home. Uh, stay safe in, in, in our house and stay away from the coronavirus. But I want to give an update because we did some huge things today uh, in times that we were not prepared for, uh, times that none of us saw coming. And so I want to give an update on what we did today because uh, it is big. I, some of it's just really big financially and some of it's historic. Uh, so on, on the coronavirus history part of this, uh, today... Uh, the governor called us into special session uh, and asked us to approve his recommendation or his call for uh, a catastrophic health emergency. Uh, that's something that's in statute, it's in law, but the state of Oklahoma, we have never ever had to actually declare one of these uh, types of emergency. And uh, we did it today. Uh, it's something I, I never in my wildest dreams ever thought that I would be a part of for the sheer fact that it goes against the grain of what I believe uh, as a conservative Republican, uh, we gave the governor an incredible amount of power today so that he can deal very quickly, very swiftly uh, with the, the coronavirus and with what we still expect to be a, a pretty significant surge in people who need to go to the hospital, people who need to be put in intensive care, specifically people who need to be on ventilators. Um, there are, are laws and rules and, and all kinds of things that we have in the state of Oklahoma that we need to work around right now because of this crisis. And instead of the legislature being able to come in and go through committee hearings and vote on bills and send it to the house and send it back. And, you know, it, it's a very slow process, which is usually beautiful. I, I love the fact that our government moves slow, but right now we need to be able to move quickly. And so today I, I was very happy to vote to give Governor Stitt the power to move quickly to prepare us for what we know is about to come. And when you look at, at Italy or even closer to home, when you look at what's happening in New York City, we see what could happen with the coronavirus. And so I, I was happy to be a part of the group that, that gave the governor uh, a significant amount of flexibility today to go out and, and do what needs to be done to try to prepare us as best we can. Uh, it is something that the legislature can go back in anytime we want and take those powers away. So as soon as this emergency is over, uh, those powers go away. It, it all goes back exactly the way it was before today. Uh, but until this emergency is over, uh, we're going to have to trust the governor to, to go out and do those things. And I've, I've been busy working behind the scenes, preparing for what happens next. And so there will be, I, I believe, uh, the governor will put out some executive orders. He's going to uh, really move a lot of things around and, and change some of the rules, change the way we do things on a normal uh, day uh, to be prepared for these extraordinary days. And so uh, that was history. Uh, hopefully it never, ever has to happen again in the state of Oklahoma because the only time we would ever do something like this is when we're faced with an emergency, uh, the likes of what we believe we're about to see with the coronavirus. And so the other thing that we had to do, which is really heartbreaking, is that we had to go in and uh, we approved moving money from the state's rainy day fund and, and kind of reallocating and, and moving around some money because all of a sudden uh, we believe that we're going to be a little bit over $400 million short for this year. And just so you understand how crazy that is, when we started session in February, okay, <laughs> this is the first week of April, when we started the first week in February, two months ago, we thought we were really close to being right on budget. Uh, we thought we might be just a little bit short, uh, but as of today, we 
believe that we are a little over $400 million short in this year's budget. And so we had to go in today, and we had to, to go in because if we don't do this, the state doesn't have the money in the correct funds to pay its bills. Now, don't hear me wrong. The state's not broke. We're not out of money. Um, we have saved a significant amount of money for a rainy day, uh, but the legislature has to move that money out of that rainy day fund and out of that kind of savings uh, mindset and move that into the general fund so that we can pay our bills. And so we did that today. Uh, we went in and we had multiple bills to move money, not just from the rainy day fund, but, but we, we moved some other things around uh, to prepare the budget for a, a $400 million shortfall. Um, and so we did that today. Hopefully, Governor Stitt will uh, sign those bills. There's some question on, on that, and we may uh, end up being forced to go back and, and do it again. I really, really hope not, but uh, I'm, that's, that's stuff that's above my pay grade right now. Um, and so those are the things we did today. Uh, the legislature has been working from home just like everybody else. This is the first time I've put on a tie uh, since I was put into quarantine well over two weeks ago. Um, it was a weird day. Uh, we wore face masks. Uh, we kept our distance. I'm actually a little bit physically tired because uh, we stayed in our office until we voted, and we voted uh, well over 20 times today. So I had to run out of my office, run down the stairs, vote, run back upstairs, hide again, and just did that over and over and over all day long um, just because we wanted to keep our social distance and we didn't want to go back to our districts and bring the coronavirus uh, from the middle of downtown Oklahoma City, which is the biggest hot spot that we have in the state. Uh, we wanted to get in, we wanted to get out, and we wanted to be safe, and, and hopefully we accomplished that goal. So I'm back home. I'm going to go in. I'm going to eat dinner with my family. I'll be on conference calls. I'll be answering emails. I'll be doing all those things again tomorrow. Uh, very, very busy on the healthcare front right now, but I wanted to just give you that quick update uh, on the catastrophic health emergency and on our, our budget shortfall. Uh, these are really hard times for the state of Oklahoma. Uh, none of us would have ever dreamed that we were going to be in this place, but, uh, I'm confident I'm surrounded by a lot of good people and we're doing everything we can, uh, to, to bring Oklahoma through this crisis and, and hopefully bring us back out even stronger. Uh, so we'll talk about coming back out and, and going stronger. And one of the things that we're going to talk about when this is all over is I don't ever want to be in a place where our drugs are not manufactured in the United States, where our masks are not manufactured in the United States. That has to change. And so when we get to the other side of this, we've got to have some of those conversations. We can't be dependent on China the way that we were dependent. And uh, working on the medical side, I can tell you, between the drugs and the masks, uh, we are way more dependent on China than I could have ever dreamed on the medical side. And it's hurting us now. And literally, there are people in the United States and there are people in Oklahoma that I believe will die through this crisis because we were too dependent on China. And it will be my mission when this is all over and when things get back to normal to make sure that we don't ever have to have, have that happen again. Uh, so we'll talk about that in the future, but it's, it's a real passion of mine right now. So uh, God bless you. Stay home. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Hug your family. And take care of your friends and your neighbors, especially those that, that are older and immunocompromised. Go to the store for them uh, and pray for every dead gum one of us because we need it. Uh, and we've got a God who will listen, and we've got a God that loves us. So uh, God bless you guys, and uh, we'll talk again soon.